Welcome to Backstage, another week's edition. Matthew, looking good. What is that? Uh, what's that jersey you got on there? Well, mate, I was doing a little bit. I thought I'd do a little bit of training, so I got this jersey and, and just threw it on. So this jersey, there actually is a thriving rugby league competition in Serbia, and this is Red Star Belgrade. Oh, that's Serbia. A lot of good uh, Serbian rugby league players. The Travojevic's. Travojevic's. Um, yeah, there's been well, maybe not a lot. No, no, there, <laughs> there's been a bit. Uh, Dragan uh, Dudovic. Was that a good player? There's, there's quite a few. Yeah, thriving rugby league competition there. But, uh, Red Star Belgrade's a very famous club, a sporting club. It was a big soccer club. I think they won the European Cup in 90, 1991. And uh, Prozanetsky and a lot of great, uh, great players played in that side. I'm trying to think of that bit in the final. Maybe Star Bucharest. Anyway, that's by the by. But uh, I tell you what, I'm enjoying. Um, but Beer? yeah, but thank you. They sent, and how this ended up was they sent me. I, I, they sent me this jersey from Red Star Belgrade, by the way. So anyone watching from over there for the club, thank you very much. And uh, good luck going forward. It's good to see no Rugby League spread, spreading its wings. <laughs> this year, I'm enjoying Dave Dave Warner's beer. There you go. So. Yeah, that's right. He brought a few in when we uh, when we interviewed him. Yeah. They were good. We had a few on it. On- St. Andrew's Beach Brewery, people. If you, you, you spot them out and about, have one. So, uh, support a bloke who's struggling, Dave Warner. Hey? Yeah, <laughs> mate, Dave Warner, he needs more cash. He does, Dave. mate, but, yeah. but it's a, it is a good beer. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Mm. Mate, what, just quietly, the rugby league games, uh, mm. two to zero in on, Raiders upset over Manly Incredible. last week. Do you remember we were sitting there, we're sitting there, I was actually cooking, um, <laughs> cooking up a storm, and uh, Math. when it went 20 nil, I went to you, I said, mate, this is going to end up probably 60. And yeah. then little moment, Elliot Whitehead, flick pass, mm. uh, intercept flick pass. You did say that. You did say um, you felt Manly were about to plateau. I said they should win this by 60. I said, but watch Manly. Manly and the Warriors have got a bad habit this year of plateauing. Yeah. Just, they, they dominate for the first 30 minutes, then they just plateau for whatever reason. Well, that's what, when I was there last year, our focus used to be start fast and front load. So it'd be, let's just front load all of our energy. Can I just, say, but, can, can I just stop you right there, right? <laughs> front load. I hear people saying that a lot, like coaches in interviews, oh, we need to front load our energy a bit more. Yeah. Just say start fast. It's a, it's a term <sighs> that they use. They, they use what? it religiously in video sessions. What they think it, they think it makes them sound more intelligent. Just there's a lot to be said in just talking straight, plain English. It is, Simple terms. It is weird in like in rugby league teams they f- they do zero in on a, a specific word and they think that that individual word is a good trigger for players' mentality as they go out in the field. But I mean, at the end no, of the day, no, I think I players totally know agree. what you mean when they say start fast. Well. It, <laughs> so you're trying to tell me, like, oh, they should know what it's about when you say start fast, as opposed to front load energy. I would suggest that most players, when they say front load energy, they'd nod and go, yeah, and go, what the fuck are you talking front about? Front loading, like, man. Yeah. Um, but, oh, man, a lot of injuries too. Um, Adam Reynolds in that Broncos Roosters game. Uh, Jock Madden tore... J- Je- Jock Madden didn't play. Jesse yeah, Arthur. No, but I think, I think Jock Madden's got an injury at the moment too. So don't know who they they got up there. That's a that's that's a unless that's a unless lot. you put Tristan Saylor in there with. I think that's what they'll do. Yeah, yeah. With Ezra, and they'll they'll rejig the attack and just make it run centric through the middle. Yeah. Uh, to to hey, how's Colin Jackie? Jackie O works. Yeah, yeah. We had Jackie O on last week. She loved coming on the podcast. Did she enjoy it? A lot of great feedback. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was a good week launching in Melbourne. Can I just say one thing? Trish is not happy about the way we concluded the podcast oh, really? by you saying that you felt that me and Jackie had a bit of chemistry there. Yeah, Trish was like, well, w- w- what were you doing down there? And I went, uh, interview? She goes, oh, I made all the carrying on at the end there. I said, Trish, your two sons Joe. were in. <laughs> they were actually in the studio. Yeah, so, there was no... Nonetheless. Hand. So, uh, yeah, it started in Melbourne. It started in Melbourne. Lots of backlash uh, from media and whatnot, as we expected, but... You know, it was funny. I really, uh, Jackie, Jackie made a comment that uh, Bernard Fanning was good looking. Yeah, uh, obviously, yeah. sings you, "Wish You Well," an mm-hmm. Aussie icon. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kyle said, "Well, let's ring." Said out to Pete, who's one of the producers in turn. Pete said, "Ring, ring Bernard Fanning." And Pete must have just had Fanning in his <laughs> contacts and accidentally dialed Mick Fanning. <laughs> and Mick Fanning came on the air and he was like, "Hello." 
because it shows up with like a, a private number when you ring out from the studio. And Kyle thought it would be funny. He was going, Bernard. Bernard thinking it was Bernard Fanning. And it just went on that for like that for 10 seconds going, Bernard. And then Mick was going, hello? Hello, who's this? And then Jackie was going, is this you, Bernard? Is this you, Bernard? <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine he would actually get prank calls like that a bit where like pretending Bernard Fanning. Yeah. Uh, and then he just hung up and then Pete goes, sorry guys, that was actually, I think that was Nick Fanning. <laughs> Mate, the uh, uh, intern Pete is the Jerry Krause. Oh he's, yeah. He's so good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mate, I uh, I do have a little gift for you as well, just quietly. Uh, Reg Reagan, who is obviously a friend of the show. Uh, you'll know this. His favourite beer back in the day was KB and uh, Filthy Finds. Actually, a, uh, a hat brand on Instagram who uh, resell hats. They they opened up a range and they sent us a few. For <laughs> I knew you'd love it. So there you go, Koba. Where did KB come from? Just by the way, did you? Why make it became that? Reg's favourite drink? Well, did you invent it? Was it real beer? Okay. Well, I was going to really. I was going to say, mate, where you've been hiding, but actually it, it was almost sort of finished by the time, oh, well finished by the time you blokes were born. It was probably finished by, excuse me, Jesus. You're right burping what? into oh, that I'm mic? So sorry. <laughs> Is but, that uh, beer just full of CO2? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably by the mid-80s it, it was sort of being you know, push, pushed to the side. But um, in, the, in the 70s... In the seventies, this was uh, like what? What's it like? What's a big beer now? Like, what, like say, okay, VB. Right? Yeah, VB. I suppose it's the big, the big, the big two in Australia. Well, that was it was it was basically the VB of its day, and um, and my dad, Gaz, your pop, used to drink it all the time, and all his mates all drank, everyone drank KB. So when Red Reagan come to prominence. Of course, Reg being a, a, a legend of the 70s and 80s, being a 70s and 80s guy, then, of course, what else was he going to drink? He was going to drink VB, uh, going to drink KB. But why is it not around anymore, then? I don't know why it got discontinued. Um, Would it just get bullied out by the other ones? or No, I, 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 I'll give you a theory, and it's not, it's not um, concrete. This is like, you know, my theory. A bloke once told me who was a... Um, he was a beer maker, made alcohol. He said, what's happening is, as you get older, your taste buds respond more to sour as opposed to sweet, more savoury than sweet. You know, when you start... Now, KB, when you taste KB, it was a very, almost, a, it was a sweet beer. Yeah. And palates these days, yeah, it's not so much. If you're going to drink a beer, you like that sort of, for use of a better term, Metallic taste. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Hey, uh, mm. guess, thanks to Filthy Fines for that as well, but uh, guest today, Thank you. Jana Hocking, Yep, we've got on. Uh, what do you know about Jana? <laughs> is, is that actually a question? What do you know yeah, about Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're, you're the one who got her on. She used to she, work with you? Jenna was our producer on the grill team. Champion joined us, and we warned us straight away this is a pretty inappropriate show. Not Kyle and Jackie O, inappropriate, but she was like, okay. And she was just a trooper. She's fantastic. And these days, she's uh, still doing a lot of radio stuff and producing, but really come to prominence internationally as a relationship and sex expert. Like a journalist, like that guru almost. Yes. Like the love guru. Yes, love guru. She'll, she'll, Basically, she appears all over the world on things, you know, like uh, that people want to know things, things like uh, orgasm. I don't even know what that. What is, is that? I What's don't know. The... Never. I have no idea. What? No idea what it is. An orga and, uh, orgasm. But champion, you you really you really like Jenna. Well, She's a very 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 nice person. And I'll tell you what I've got to do. I don't think me sitting here with Jenna because I haven't seen her for. A number of years since I left the grill team. I want to present my best self. I want to act to her to look at you and go, and go, geez, Matty, the years, the last five years yeah. have been very good to you. The earnest years. Well, before you get out of there, you go and get changed. I'll get changed with you. But uh, everyone listening, before we get into the interview, can you follow us on the podcast and Spotify app for all the updates? Uh, get on there, hit the follow button, subscribe, because a lot of really exciting episodes that are just to come. Big year ahead. Big year. Big year. In okay. other news, here comes Jana Hawking. Welcome, uh, Jana. 
uh, podcast, first podcast. Sorry, let me. T- <laughs> Do you know what? Let me get that again. Do you know no, what, let, Jenna? No, we're no. actually going to leave that in. No, we're not. Okay. Jack, we're leaving that in. Yeah, so yeah. Good. Okay, no, take, take two. Guys. We don't need to clap. I'll walk off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome, Jenna, to the Backstage Podcast. Before we get into the nuances of your career, you and Matthew, oh. yes. uh, you've had a lot to do with each other. We have, Jenna. I think it's a 10-year friendship now. It I think is. it's about 10 years. It is. We worked on the grill team, the Triple M grill team together for years and years. Yeah. Some of the best times of my work. Actually, I was going to say working life. Some of the best times of my life. I agree. I was thinking about this last night and I was like, there are two times in my life that I would go back to. The first one is uni because like not for the work, yeah. but I went to uni in Bathurst and it was the best time of my life. And then the second time was the grill team. Oh. It was so fun. It shouldn't have been a job. <laughs> it was it was it was unbelievable. And the dynamics, it was amazing, Jenna, because other people you would talk to who would, had produced or been in breakfast radio shows, they couldn't believe how long how well we all got on. Yeah. And they're like, Really? Like most breakfast shows hate each other. I mean, <laughs> there's exceptions. Kyle and Jackie O obviously get on mm-hmm. very, very well. I mean, Amanda and Josie have lasted so long, so they do. But, yeah, it's a rarity. They usually eat each other apart. Well, there was actually, I think, closed-door meetings because we were so clicky. We were so tight that I think the rest of the office used to get a bit funny and they would be like, guys, you've got to include us in stuff. But we were just having so much fun. I remember there was someone who worked on the afternoon shift once. I remember he, he, had, he had his producer cornered <laughs> in the room and, like, you know, yelling, and, you know, and... And me and MG said, let's go and sort him out. We stood over <laughs> yeah. and said, hey, listen, fuckface. What um, most radio shows, because you're obviously a producer on the show. Yes. But a lot of the producers are involved in the show. What was your, mm. why don't you give our listeners oh an insight God. to what your role, because you had a good role. I loved my role. I was guest booker, which mm. was fun. But I also would get called on for the girl opinion. That's it. But then I would also get caught on if, like, there was one specific occasion where I'd been at the Christmas party. This is why it was the best job in the world. Because I had been at the Christmas party. I got really, really drunk. And I completely slept through my alarm. And you called me live on air. And I didn't know. And I answered the phone with, crap, I've slept in. <laughs> yeah. I was still drunk. And you guys were like, bah. <laughs> then I get to work. Pretty sure I was still drunk. You call me in and you're like, tell us what happened last night. I was like, I hooked up with the office hottie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, any other workplace, that would be a closed door meeting. In trouble. Yeah. HR. Yeah. Oh, so but how was Gus been... Walland in there? <laughs> oh, oh, God. No, no. Gus Walland oh. is hilarious. What about that? Jenna, because I remember you would book guests sometimes, <laughs> yeah. uh, TV personalities, movie stars, mm-hmm. rock stars. Some of them would sort of hit on you or ask you <laughs> yeah. out. Did you ever go out with any of them? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know there's an Australian uh, singer once who was very big. I, think you, he... I got to go to the Taylor Swift concert. Because he came in and he was her backup um, support act. And I was definitely chatting him up. I was ruthless. I'm not going to lie. We had men on that show because I had a crush on them. (laughs) (laughs) That's why we go, why the fuck are they coming in? (laughs) Why are we interviewing Vance Joy? We don't even play with him. Then there was other ones, Jenna. Remember in the, the time... A member of Guns N' Roses came in. Actually, I got a name, Stephen Adler. And he's well known, <laughs> Stephen. Adler as well, because that morning he was rather addled with something. Oh, yeah. And he, he turned up. It, t- it, it takes a lot to sh- shock us on the show. And he just turned up. We all went, ha. Oh. And then we had to get him out of the building. He was just harassing you. Oh, my God. He harassed me on air. He went into the studio. Remember, he was like, yeah, that blonde producer. (laughs) (laughs) She's real hot. (laughs) What about the Jerry Halliwell one that time? Remember, Jerry Halliwell came in and her thing, because we had Woody working for us as well, Woody the touch judge. And Woody, God bless him, Woody, champion guy Woody. But he's so he, he he's got he, and he'll admit it, he's got something just missing between his brain that someone says don't do anything it, it just it just <laughs> dis, he just dismisses it. She came in Jerry Halliwell, and she said absolutely no photos right ginger spice. Bless. 
Anyway, as soon as she come in, Woody goes, say cheese, bang. <laughs> she goes, you disgusting little man. And he would just laugh. Same but with placebo. He, he wasn't this. wrong. Like, she wasn't wrong. <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was a beautiful, disgusting little man. Jonah Hill. Channing Tatum, remember they came in there? I wasn't there for that. Oh, I gotcha. came two months after that and oh. I was so upset. Didn't they come from a really big night? They had, I'll tell you what had happened, Janet. They'd had a massive night and then they were down the line from some well-known arsehole in Melbourne who used oh, to give God. guests quite a hard time, go for the shock value. Mm. And they came off 21 Jump Street and they were a little – when they came out to us, they were rattled because he just – took them on and said how bad the movie was and et cetera. It said me and Paige just saw it the next day. We loved it. I mean, we were blind drunk, but anyway, nonetheless. <laughs> but they came in and when we start, they were rattled and, they, and we started interviewing them and they said, we said, oh, hey guys, thanks for joining us. And Jonah Hill said, we are having such a good time. We're going to stay for the full hour. Oh, legends. Mm. I loved people like that. I remember you coming in one day. After you'd been out with the Foo Fighters. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think awesome. you came straight from hanging out with them to work. Was that, was that right. were you still a Triple M when you hung out with the Foo Fighters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. album launch. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. went to Frankie's because Frankie's was still open. Yes. And I was so jealous because I love the Foo Fighters. It was... Uh, yeah, there's a number of things that went on that night. There was some <laughs> swashbuckling shenanigans. There was a bit of controversy, a little bit of everything. What, what about mm. what about some of the pranks you guys did? Oh, I, my God, I, I've got the best one. I, I put listen. it in an article the other day. Oh, yes, go. It involved a pink dildo with glitter. <laughs> <laughs> was that the one that sat in Paige's drawer? Yes. For like 10 forever, years? Forever, yeah. forever. And he thought it was the funniest thing to put it in my handbag <laughs> all the time when I left, which to be fair, was the funniest thing in the whole world. <laughs> and I remember the first time he did it, I went to Sports Girl, which is a crime in itself. But I went to Sports Girl to buy earrings and I opened up my bag to pay for them and there was just this giant pink glittery dildo <laughs> in my bag. And oh my God, I was like cry laughing. This woman is looking at me horrified <laughs> thinking I'm a sex pest. But I did get, I didn't get him back, but I got Max Dudley back out. EP, because yes. then the next week I put it in his travel case to go back to Brisbane, oh. and I he did get caught with it. They always do. Pagey got MG too. MG was going away, going interstate somewhere, and he got it, and he strapped it uh, <laughs> to something in his bag. So when it went through, the guy... Oh, like MG a deodorant was, bottle. The deodorant bottle. Deodorant he put bottle. it to the deodorant <laughs> bottle. So MG's turned up. At the airport, and the security guy goes, Hey, MG, everyone, Mark, guys here. Oh. Yeah, g'day, fellas, how you doing? They go, Oh, hang on, mate, we're just going to have a look at something. And they said, Mate, what is this? Was he, was, was that like so it goes in like a double hole? Is that what the, he was tying it to the Rick No, hole? it was because you weren't allowed to bring aeros aerosols oh. and carry on. So they would just, they'd see it go through the x ray and they'd pull it out in front of everyone. Okay, that makes sense. I thought maybe it was f like ch double action kind of thing. No, yeah. no, no, no. No. That's no, sorry about that. No, a little uncouth. Save that for the Colin Jackie O show. Sorry, God. Yeah. I, I thought, I didn't know we were clean. Jenna, <laughs> and the other one, the No BS Grand Final Luncheons. Oh, I miss them oh. so much. So much. Every time the grand final comes on, I think about them. But my favorite, there were two things from the No BS lunch that were my favorite. First was getting to get up on stage and give the, um, I, what do you call it when you, like, you make everyone stand up and they have to swear. Oh, you could do the oath. The oath. Oh, yes. The oath. And I got to drop the C-bomb. So I was like, Paigey, I can't possibly do this because he wrote me a whole script. And the first script did not get passed because it involved um, the lead singer of Queen and <laughs> what he died from. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I Mate. can't mention that, but I did mention, um, you don't have to be a bit because I'll, I'll say the C word, but I said, and so we basically made everyone stand who came to No BS Lunch and swear allegiance that whatever was said or happened at the No BS Lunch, they weren't allowed to leave. Because there yeah. were no phones either. No there phone. were no yeah. phones. Yeah. We took it so seriously. The metal detector. Metal detectors. Men in tuxedos. Like everyone had to go black tie. It's the craziest <laughs> thing you've ever seen. 
And I got to get up on stage and be like, you will not share anything that happens at No Beers Lunch. You will not go to the media. All phones are banned. And if they're not, you're a full blown C word. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got to drop the mic and walk off stage. And everyone, because I was in like a pretty dress, I looked like, you know, just an innocent girl. And the whole room just went, yeah. That's Were you the only the girl there? Uh, was it? One of the only girls there yeah. for the first Because yeah. generally, I'd been to one, and usually it was wow. only like guys in terms of guests. Like, not many girls yeah. bought tickets to go. Because it was no. so, like, that was the biggest th- we, thing we did every year. We did competitions. You couldn't buy tickets, you had to win them via the breakfast show. And honestly, <laughs> people would be like just ringing non stop for hours and just being. It was, it was quite incredible. We actually got people, businesses, reach out and go, hey, listen. If you if we can, we'll buy a table for twenty grand. Yeah, we said we can't do it. Ta- not- it was Taylor. It was the original Taylor Swift. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and do you remember Ray Hadley and um, who's the Walking Dead? What do we call? Um, oh, John um, Laws. John Laws. <laughs> the Walking Dead. <laughs> we it, both of them called and were like, because one of our trials was if you can get on another station or a TV show saying I really want to go to the No BS lunch, we'll give you tickets. And John Laws and Ray Hadley were like, enough, guys. Every second caller is saying, yeah, Hadley really would be like, now listen, <laughs> there's a couple of imbeciles over at Triple M, right? No one listens to them. Well, obviously, some people do because they could around pester me. I'm telling you now, Matthew, if these calls keep coming through to me, he goes, there will be consequences. And uh, with Ray, you take that. There's certain things with Ray, yeah. And there's certain things with Ray when people interrupt his breakfast show or morning show because of, yeah, there's generally consequences. We had to tell him to lay off. Did you know, a uh, little fun fact, John Laws lives underneath Russell Crowe? Yes, he, not I as in, no, not as in not, underneath not, him. Metaphorically? Yeah. Or? No, no, oh, his apartment is underneath him. Straight underneath. Uh, Jim Je- heard Jim Jeffries talking about he'd been over to Russell Crowe's and he, well, I don't know if he was making it up or not, but he said he heard John Laws masturbating underneath the floorboards. <laughs> Would listen. And Kyle Would said, listen. I think it's his sleep apnea machine. <laughs> Either or. That's why it's the number one show. Yeah. Hey, uh, Janet, now before That's we talk why about. he's still alive. Yeah, before we move into uh, like your, your career, mm. rela- relationship guru, did you work as, as a producer on The Bachelor for a number of years? I did. For my first, the first ever Bachelor. We had no idea what we were doing. Who was the first Bachelor? Tim Robards and Anna Heinrich. Yeah. And still together. Still together. About to have their second child. Um, it was really hard because he came in the first day, met all the girls and just went, it's Anna. And we're like, oh, God, oh, God. He picked her, and for the entire series, he did not waver. It was Anna. And every time we're like, okay, who do you want to go on a date with? He was like, Anna. We're like, you can't do the whole series Did with he Anna. kiss any other girls? You know? Every All the girls. Oh, he kissed them all still. And it was oh, really hard as a Georgie producer. Yeah, yeah. We threw one girl because he just wasn't kissing anyone because he was holding out for Anna. And so we knew one girl was obsessed with him. She was really in love. So we did kind of throw her on a date with him because we're like, he's got to kiss someone. And we knew she would launch and she did launch. So we're like, thank God. And then it just opened the floodgates and he kissed everyone. Thank God. (laughs) So Janet, the idea to become a a relationship guru. Yes. Now you were were writing articles when we were working together, Mm -hmm. but... I suppose, firstly, what, where did the idea come from? And secondly, what was the article you wrote that really launched you? Uh, there's, uh, that's a good question. So I started writing them because I did a journalism degree at Bathurst. Yep. And then I kind of got waylaid. I worked at Getaway for five years. Oh, and yeah. I, yeah, that was that, How was that fun? the best, the yeah. best. It really gave me the travel bug. So yeah, gotcha. I loved that. And then I got into reality and then I got into radio. And I was thinking about this last night. I was like, why did it take me so long to get back into writing? And I was like, because the grill team was so fun. Mm. Like we had so much fun that I never needed that other creative mm. outlet. And then um, I really kind of dived deep after we guys finished and went, okay, I'm a bit bored now. Like I've had my good years. What's next? And a boy 
I was dating said to me, I was like, I think I want to get back into writing. And he's like, you won't be able to get published. And I'm the kind of person that's like challenge accepted. (laughs) So I was like, what will get clicks? What can I write about? I was like, boobs. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So I submitted an article on boobs and my boobs specifically and um how outrageous it is that like it was about girls treating other girls horrible because they had boobs it was such a ridiculous article but it did really well so I sent it to news.com yep and they were like we love it okay do it and so then that did well and then they started news.com started a women's website so they said well can you start writing for us with that Mm. and I did it was called women (laughs) original (laughs) and then um that closed during COVID because there was just you know Mm. everyone was really kind of shutting up shop and my articles were doing really well there so then news.com said well we're closing women but can you keep writing for us and so um yeah a few oh no the the one article that really (laughs) launched (laughs) is not a great one um no I think it's a great one but I got a lot of flack for it was uh I wrote about the time I was dating a guy panda (laughs) I don't know sorry panda he knows I write about him all the time (laughs) um and he had my boob photos why does it all keep coming back to (laughs) boobs but he had um some boob shots and we had broken up and it wasn't a cute breakup. And I was like, oh, he's going to get drunk and show his friends. So I broke into his house and I <laughs> commando rolled into his room. Thank God he was a deep sleeper. He had like Axel, he's like staffy terrier. Thank God he loved me because he met me at the front door and was like, welcome. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, commando rolled into his room, grabbed his phone, deleted my boob shots. And left. And so then I was like, that's kind of a funny story. So I wrote about that and it went wild. Did he know? Did it? Like, did he, he knows know? now. He didn't notice he, at the he time? He knew a week later because he was like, where the fuck is... Oh, sorry. Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> no, you <laughs> swear. Okay. Go for it. That's fine. So he went looking for the boob photos? Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank God. And this was like, this was the olden days where you didn't have to then go into the deleted folder oh, okay. or any of that. So when I deleted them, they were gone. And I wrote about it and then it went a bit wild and I was doing interviews with like American radio shows and everything. And then Lad Bible did the best um, retaliation article and they were like, we wanted to go to town on her. We wanted to think this was outrageous. But bravo, well yeah. done. I was like, okay, if Lad Bible is saying it's okay, it's okay. What but. about that? Because when we work together, you come in, sometimes you've been on a date and you just come in and talk <laughs> yes. about all the dead shit you date. Because yes. you, you, that's where you get a lot of your material. The best. Weirdest dates you've ever had? Strangest? Oh, there's been some dandies. Uh, there was the guy... <laughs> I forgot about this, but my friend brought up the other day. There was a guy I went on a movie date with and he was gone for ages. And I'm watching this movie, but I'm like, where is he? And I'm waiting and waiting. I'm like, do I leave? And I've texted him. I'm like, you okay? What's happening? And he came back and he was real sweaty. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I like it already. Oh, no. And there was kind of a stench (laughs) and he I turned to him and I was like where have you been he's like oh I just went to get some sushi but the whole time for the rest of the movie his stomach was grumbling I was like you had gastro (laughs) and he was so sweaty and he kept running and going to the bathroom I'm like just leave just leave if you've got gastro just leave there was him there was oh my god there was a guy uh during lockdown who had put all these pictures on his dating app and he looked really hot. And I was like, heck yeah, this is going to be a great date. And I get to the bar and I can't see him. It was when you had to sign in and like, you know, there's yeah, that QR long Yeah, QR checking codes yes. and stuff. So I'm signing in and I'm looking around, looking around. I see this guy in the corner waving and I was like, oh, hi. But like, <laughs> don't know who you are. I'm still looking around. I'm looking around. He keeps waving. And I was like, hi. But like, who the heck is that? Eventually, he's like, it's me. This guy was 20 kilograms heavier. (laughs) He was huge. He was huge. And he was like, 
gaslit me the entire day. I was mortified because I was like, this poor guy, he's used photos from like five years gaslit ago. Gaslit you how, like he was he saying. He kept saying that my job was cute. I was working Talk. for the grill team. Oh, yep, right. And he kept saying, you've got such a cute job. I work oh. in banking. And I was like, mm, I already hate you. <laughs> cute job. <laughs> cute job. And then at the end of it, he tried to um, make me download a song that he had written because he thought it sounded oh, really good on Triple M. Mate. Oh, oh <laughs> no. Have you got the song here? <laughs> No, I've like I've like blocked him on. God, everything. I want to meet that guy. Oh, he was the worst and tried to drag me to show his me his car, which I'm not convinced was in a kidnap attempt. But yeah. yeah, there's been some doozies. I had a I had a mate who he was on Tinder. He broke up, divorced, went on Tinder, and uh, I said, "Mate, how does this work? Show me." Anyway, he showed his profile photo, and I went, "Mate." <laughs> That's where we went to fucking high school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they do. There's yeah. some that are like Polaroids. I'm like, yeah. you're real old. Because you once wrote, read an article, you said that dating apps are dead. They are. I suppose, what, is that one of the reasons? Uh, so many reasons. I get sent at least once a week some guy sending me a picture. That's my pictures, but they're named Anna. Or yeah. Hannah, oh. and there. Okay, the most offended I've got is some girl said she was forty-five, <laughs> pretending oh. to be me. I was like, I don't get Botox for nothing. Like, <laughs> are you taking the piss? Um, but there's so many catfish yeah. on there, or there's so many filters, or it's really dangerous. Yeah, there and, is, and and it went. Tinder went through that where it went. It became real uncool, and if you went on there, it was only catfish. And then yeah. it went to places like Hinge and Bumble. But now it's just riddled on all of them. Yeah, it is. And I think the meat cute is back, which is I don't know if you've heard of the meat cute. Like it's meeting? my favorite thing. What is that? Okay, so that's um, you know, in a movie where they run into each other in a bookstore or the oh, supermarket. Yeah. It's a meat cute because oh, it okay. shouldn't have happened, but. Someone's clocked someone, they fancy them, they shoot their shot. Yeah. Gotcha. Everyone's about the meet cute now. Oh, so now it's it's gone back to being. Yeah. Go somewhere and just meet someone. Yes. Do it do it the, the analog way. Yes. And now people are getting savvy because everyone's got the dating app fatigue. Like everyone's been on so many bad dates that they're like, we're tapping out, we're done, it's too hard. It's interesting. Yeah. So you, d- keeping with that. Do you think the day will come? Like, do you think that we've come so far with technology and how we engage with other people now it's starting to wind back the other way? I think so. I think Hope we're so. appreciating what we had. And, I mean, Bumble's okay. They're getting there because they're now doing um, – you can make sure that the account – like, if it has a blue tick, it means they're, they're verified. being verified. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's pedos. actually yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I is this think... really Elon, Elon Musk? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it hey, is. is this really Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> nice Matty Johns. He just really likes me. <laughs> That's not Matty Johns. He has a full head of hair in this picture. <laughs> mate, fans don't like the jokes, mate. I've warned you a few times, the short jokes and the ball jokes. He just won a premiership. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, what is that? Um, what's your relationship status now then? Uh, it's uh, complicated. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, in between jobs. It's always in between. Okay. It's always in between. But um, I'm going on two dates this week. Oh, yeah. It's real yin and yang. So I've got the reality star, not maths, not maths, oh, everyone. God. Okay. Um, and I not think my 600 pound life. <laughs> yeah. no, I've already embarrassing, dated that. embarrassing bodies. Is <laughs> I... <laughs> Definitely already dated. That. Can I just say I got almost cancelled for that article because oh, I put I just put one sentence that just said. He looked like he's been in a good paddock. <laughs> and then oh. all these women came out saying, you are body shaming. You are like, um, what do they say? You're comparing a man to a farm animal. Oh my God. <laughs> I just said, we've all been in the good paddock. Yeah. He has been recently. Yeah. Anyway, don't say. So that's yeah. so you're on one date. Oh, yeah, so I'm doing one date with a reality guy. Yep. But that's for fun and maybe content, yeah, which yeah. I think he's okay with. Do you do that often? Do you sometimes go on a date just for content? Yeah, it's called For the Plot. Yeah. And it's a new toxic trend that we women are taking up to okay. uh, clarify dating guys we know are a really, really bad idea. Okay. And so we say to ourselves, we're doing it for the plot. Yeah. But really, it's just us saying, we know it's going to be bad. 
We know he's a Peter Pan, but we're doing it for the plot. And in my case, for the story. Jesus, oh, Jesus hard to be a guy these days. <laughs> these girls just taking advantage of us. God, I'll tell you what. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> Okay, date number two. Date number two is with a guy I think I'll marry. So Wow, yeah. right. <laughs> I hope this comes out after we've yeah. been on the date. Um, beautiful country guy from Orange, the town I was born. He's salt of the earth, thinks what I do is hilarious, but also super supportive. So we like that. We like a man that's not intimidated by it. But also kind of a little cheerleader. Right. So I yeah. like him. I, that's what I need. A guy that's not, because there are a lot of guys who do a quick Google and they go, oh, God, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Whereas he's kind of like, it's cool. I think it's funny. Yeah. Have you, you have you ever had a, obviously people can Google you because you got a high profile. Do you ever get people sort of stalkerish yeah. and w- oh, when yeah. you go on dates? Yeah, yeah. I've had some interesting run-ins. I've had Oh, there's a guy in America who has half a million followers on YouTube. He's called The Joker, and he's giving Stephen Tate vibes. Oh, and yeah, okay. he So Stephen Tate is that sort of hardcore anti-feminist. Yeah, great. Yeah, women great. are here to serve. Okay. They are B grade yeah, right. okay. vibes. But this guy, it's so good. He is in America, he, like deep south. He's got an American flag in the background of his videos. It's clearly his mother's basement. He's like short, bald. You know, some girl broke his heart and he's been hating women ever since. And he does, every week, he dissects my articles. He's got half a million followers. And he goes through them and it takes me like half an hour to write one of my articles. Maybe like I just quickly whip them out. It's whatever I'm thinking, feeling, whatever. And he will spend an hour dissecting them. And um, we do drinking games now. So every time he either says she's hit a wall or she's almost 40 or (laughs) she's going to die with cats, we do a shot. (laughs) Safe to say by the end of that hour. We are so drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Wow. <laughs> He's my favourite. Um, or you there's. S- you said once, right? Yeah. I'm not going to mention, but there's a well-known <laughs> actor mm. in the States that could slide into mm. DMs yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah, mm. he's naughty. But he's like, he's a bit of a cheerleader. Yeah, gotcha. He likes it. He's He's into kind of, he's just fascinated because there's a lot of women out there who write about dating, but they write it from a stance where men are the worst and aren't we all hard done by. Mm. And I don't think I do that because I have brothers. I, you know, worked at Triple M forever. And you're I a love girl men. Too. I'm country girl. Yep. And so I love just writing articles as they come and I'll offer handy advice or I'll be like, or I'll just let guys see into a girl's mind for mm. a hot second. And so a lot of guys treat it like, we girls used to treat Dolly Doctor, where it's like, oh my God, just tell us all the like pervy stuff that's going on right now. And so most of my followers are men because they just want to figure out how women think. Yeah. So I, I do attract weird guys sometimes. I've had a guy who saw on my Instagram, I was somewhere for Anzac Day and he turned up because he was like, play two up. Yeah, no, we tried to play two of them. Heads. (laughs) Boobs. (laughs) Tails. He was real keen. Or I get a lot of guys kind of corner me in bars and they want to tell me their dating stories. And I I actually don't mind that because I like trying to figure out what's going on and stuff like that. Is Sydney a tough place to be a single woman? Yeah, really tough, really tough. It's full of Peter Pans and there's more, which a Peter Pan is. Yeah, what is Peter Pan? (laughs) So, what is it? A guy that never grows up. Okay. So they are, and I don't blame them because they're living their best lives. I've got a bit of Peter Pan in me because. You know, Sydney is really fun and it it is hard to commit. What defines someone that doesn't grow up? Is that like a childish sense of humour or is that like still living at home with their parents? It's a and B. <laughs> and um, just there's so many options in Sydney. It's hard to settle. Yeah. And there's more single women to men statistically. So there's more women desperate to kind of get a boyfriend than boyfriends to get girlfriends. And then you add that 
bracket of, you know, guys that are making good money or are, um, you know, the finance bros Mm -hmm. and that. And they don't need to settle down because they've kind of got their pick of women in Sydney. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's hard to date in Sydney. Plus, they're a little bit lazy. They just, guys in Sydney tend to grunt or they'll send you a message like, you up or oh, yeah, what yeah. you want to do or come to mine and let's watch Netflix. Yeah. That means they're going to like come over and have yeah, what sex. sex. What When they say Netflix. You up no, or net? That's what the both. code for Netflix is or you up. It means why don't you just come over and have oh, sex. No. Yeah. yeah. Dad was I actually said, thinking. I said that to my uh, mother. <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry. You up, going to come over and watch Netflix. What's the Jer- <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer episode? You seen that? Can I write about Call it? Call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's the best place then in Australia to date? Uh, in Australia, country boys. You can't beat them. They, they work hard. They grow their crops. They're beautiful builders. They're whatever. They just want to come home oh. and appreciate their I'm woman. Just think of it. A reality show. The wife wants a farmer. Or I really want to do wants, that. Or the Dharma wants a wife. <laughs> hey, um, so let's spin a little bit. I'm, I'm going to compare this to sport for a second right mm-hmm. now. Now, what I mean by when you play a game of football, in the first exchanges, you get a feeling about which way the game's going to go. Or you get a sense. It's like dipping the toe in the water. You get a real sense of, is this opposition on? You know, is that what's it going to be like in the dating scene? Right? Yeah. And I haven't I basically never dated because uh, I met Trish at school. She was my <laughs> principal. And, uh, <laughs> but I imagine, Janet, with dating, the moment you can go in and face someone after the first sentence, you know. Is oh, that, yeah. You know. They, statistically, they say within two minutes of a date. Okay. You know, and it's not going to change. What's the worst thing? Because there's a lot of single, young single men and older single men listen to this. Yeah. What is the worst thing you can do in, in the first half a minute, say? So? Uh, bad breath. You would be surprised by how many guys don't brush their teeth before a day or go to the dentist. I can pick, is it halitosis? Halitosis. Halitosis from a mile away. That's a big one. Guys, oh, no, you actually make the mistakes before you even go on the date. Because a girl, and this is just, I don't know, the biology, but it's in our DNA that we like a man that takes charge. So if you say to us, I'm picking you up at this time, we're going here, let's do this, boom, you're in. Right. Like you, that's great start. A great start. You're out of the blocks. You're a oh, meter ahead out of the barriers. The best. But if you go, what do you want to do? Stuck on the barriers. Oh, you know. You, mm. you know, we're all cave people at heart. We like the caveman who takes mm. charge. So that is a really good start. Take charge. Um, get out of the boardies. Get out of the thongs. Wear a collared shirt, preferably linen, mm. but just a collared shirt. Cologne. Cologne. Mm. Men don't understand what cologne does to females' randiness. Because you know what cologne does to, I've said this before, (laughs) monkeys? You you spray cologne on a male monkey, yep, he starts slapping the monkey. I would believe that. We're like that. If I walk past a guy on the Bondi de Bronte walk and he's got cologne, I'll turn and follow him. (laughs) 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 It's very sexy and it's such an easy win. And a lot of men don't do it. I heard a story today about a woman who can make herself, I don't know if that, whether this has anything to do with cologne or something, but randiness sort of sparked it, <laughs> can make herself come like, and she'll do it in public. I heard Jackie O talk, one of Jackie O's friends. One of Jackie friends. O's friends. What is it? She can just sit, How do I do it? <laughs> she can just sit there and be in the hairdressers getting like a, a fade and she can just make herself come by her thoughts. Yeah. And no, she yeah. said she'd do it in public and no one would even know. I've never done it in public, but we women, our orgasms come from our brain. Oh. We need to feel like we're in the moment. We need a connection. Yeah, I would believe that. I've also heard that there's women who can do push ups and orgasm. I've what, never with their mind? That. Yeah, there's <laughs> some contraction thing going on. Because one of, one of my friends used to masturbate in public just by, Stop. like, we'd be... So, so, no, keep going. Let's just, yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a safe place. Yes. He plays it. He plays in the NRL. I don't want to name who name it is. Name names. He, names. Uh, he used to lay flat on his front on the floor. In, so, so if we were all in the room watching the footy 
and you'd see him just slowly. You'd see his glute. No. You could tell because you'd see his glutes pushing down on the floor. In front of his friends. <laughs> in front of friends. In front of family. He said he's very it. salt burn. Yeah, very yeah. suspicious. It's giving grave. It's but giving. but you'd know he'd be done because you just you just see his, his glutes stop tensing and he just he just be laying there on his front. Oh my god. We're going to hear about him on the news now, one day. Ken, are some of the articles you've written. Yes. And it was interesting. We had Mark Burris here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, interviewed him and Mark Burris spoke about I said some of the people that you've interviewed on your podcast and he spoke about Angela White who of course is a world famous porn star he was he was so impressed by her you know not being you know and you know lewd or any way he said how deliberate how deliberate she was and everything she said her how aware she was of her brand and her image Mm -hmm. he said she was an incredible businesswoman oh I went on a lunch date with her last week and I was blown away. And I did my research because mm. I'm a journalist, guys. Yeah, Dad's done plenty of research <laughs> as well. It no, I'm an analog. Pure research. Okay, mate, I just used my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you filmed everything. <laughs> and she has. Um, but I was quite intimidated to meet her. And I was nervous. And I knew we had an hour and a half. And I was like, we'll, have, we'll get on the dirty gin martinis. It'll be fun. We'll have a good girls chat. And... I was so shocked by her. She she doesn't drink, which means she does all those videos stone cold sober. Mm, and that was my first shock. And she's this little pocket rocket. She's 5'3", same height as me. She was she had her hair and makeup artist there for lunch, which I was like, okay, that's Again, she's not messing image. around. Yes. Her image is important. Her eye contact was incredible. And she just the way she spoke was she does it for the passion. Like I've heard the way you guys talk about football mm. is the way she talks about her job. She yeah, was like, job. I knew when I was 14, I wanted to do this job. I knew that I was passionate about it. I had to wait till I was 18. Her first ever porn job, she flew to America to do it in a for a company that was well known for their high class porn. Mm. Um, but she knew she wasn't going to do it in a garage with a handheld camera. She was like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it properly. And she's made gazillions of dollars. And she's she makes, I love that she makes no apologies. Mm. She's like, it's a job I love. I get paid for it really well. Society has changed so much. So much. It's, it's yeah, dramatically. Okay, here's a question. In one of the articles, you took a photo of a group of your good-looking single friends, mm. and they spoke about why they are s- still single. Yeah. Why? Are, th- are their standards too high? I knew you were going <laughs> to ask this. <laughs> okay, so um, when we look at the stats again, the problem is women now, we've, we're have we getting our own money. We're learning to kind of stand on our own two feet. That's why I hide Trisha's, remember? I yeah, hide together. Trisha's yeah, money in the backyard and bear it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let her see her bank yeah, account. She will okay. not see it. Dad, Dad doesn't even see his bank account. So <laughs> <laughs> he, he has no idea. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wish that was a problem I had. <laughs> um, no, women are now, more women are getting degrees. They're getting um, jobs that they're maintaining for longer. They're not having kids in their 20s anymore. They're waiting till their 30s or 40s. So they've got these well-established careers that are making really good money. And now they're kind of going, well, what are you bringing to the table? You either match me or you're above. Knowing their worth. Knowing their worth. Mm. And they don't want a guy, you know, they've slogged it out. They don't want to kind of go lower than what they've done. They've we've all dated those guys that we've tried to prop up and get them into great jobs and help them. They want guys on their level or above. And that's becoming harder because less guys are getting degrees now. Less Where women are going up with their education, men are going lower. And this is just stats. This right. isn't like, you know, saying, oh, it's so bad. It's just saying we want okay. we want someone on our level and there just aren't enough men for okay. that level. With with that, with women looking for connection, mm. um, and you said, um, you know, just not enough men at times, or the men they're looking for. Tell me about this latest craze, Skirt Club. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. Okay, so Skirt Club is also we're coming to an age now where everyone's getting really comfortable with there not being a gay, straight, 
no in between. Mm. Because we've learned now that everyone sits on the sexual spectrum in not black and white. Mm. There's a lot of gray area and there might be people who are 70% straight, but there's that 30% that's a bit curious. Mm. Or they sit, you know, there are guys that sit super, or, and girls who sit gay or straight. But there's a lot of in between. And so there was this club that was created for women uh, and it's called Skirt Club and it's where women who think they might be bisexual, they're bi-curious, can come to a really, really girly cocktail party and dabble and see if it's for them. Mm. But it's such a female-led thing because it's not like a swingers, which is predominantly made for men in the sense that you turn up, you all get naked, you boink. This is women turn up, they have a cocktail party, they have nice champagne, they have cocktails, they get to know each other. And then if they like it... Karaoke all, then. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, bit of karaoke. Is there, bit of have you been there? Have you? No, but researched. I am going to go to the next one. Where is this? It, it, so it happens around the world, um, but they hire out Airbnbs. Oh, so it's literally the house. Yes. Like a swingers party. Yeah, it's a swingers party and it gets... So a girl slid into my DMs for my saucy secrets, which I do every Monday, and she said, I went to skirt club. I realized that I'm very, very bisexual and a few of the women that were there who are also mothers and married, we now meet up in a hotel room once a month and just have a big old orgy. Oh, cool. <laughs> and I Jack, Jack, her. It's Jack true. put your shirt back on. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, you got nipples pierced. <laughs> Sweating. Hey, while you're on your saucy secrets, yes. because I have uh, looked at some of them before and they are brilliant. Some of the confessions <laughs> that you get on there so good. are very good. Yeah. So basically tell us exactly what it is and what's some of the weirdest ones you've got. Oh my God. Okay. So I was born during lockdown as we all were. I'm a bit of a perv. I want to know what's going on in the bedroom. So I just throw it out to my Instagram audience and said, tell me a saucy secret and I'll share it with everyone anonymously. And they came. <laughs> they really brought their saucy secrets. So then I was like, well, I can't just share them because that's boring. I'll find a picture to match the secret and we'll have some fun with it. So they every Sunday night I say to my audience, send me a saucy secret. And then they send it in and it's an anonymous link. So I found this app where people can share their secrets and even I can't see who has sent it. So, cause when I was doing it in like a little text box, I was getting really boring secrets. But then as soon as I said, I can't see who's sending this, then Where'd they, they brought the goods. Yeah. 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 Wow. So I got sent a lot. This, the skirt club was the best one. Like school mums having giant orgies in hotel rooms while the kids are at school. Mm. Is hard to top. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard to top, I'd reckon. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. <laughs> but there's some real patterns, which I'm noticing. There's a lot of guys that like to get pegged. Do yeah. you know what that is? Yeah. Dad, no. It's, so it's when your partner will have like... A strap-on. Dil- yeah, a strap-on dildo and have sex with you. Trish, I know what it's called now. <laughs> 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 so there's a lot of men that like getting strap-ons. There's a lot of couples that love watching their partners um, have sex with other people. Yeah, is that cuck? Are you the cuck holding? Cuck holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Oh, super it's named common. after the, uh, the cuckoo bird, doesn't he? When the cuckoo bird goes out Don't and think... he leaves the nest, then the the cuck comes in. Yeah, the, yeah. Is that actually why? Yeah. One of my friends. Cuckoo bird. One of my friends uh, <laughs> was involved in a. Cuck. He wasn't the cuck, but he got cucked in, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. Uh, like he got told. He was like, a lot oh, of you know, guys like that. yeah, like the the wife started like kissing him at a club and then was like, oh, this is my husband. And then oh, he was like, oh, okay, yeah. come back to our house. And then yeah. they would sit in there drinking champagne and mm. him and the wife started getting it on. And the, the husband just sat there, <laughs> he reckons. And every now and then, like while he's kissing the wife, an eye had opened and he'd be looking at the husband. The husband was sitting there going, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is my hus this is my husband, Iron Mike Tyson. Oh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, you know what? I'm fine. No, I'm, I'm just gonna taxi home. I'm gonna bow out. Bow uh, out. That's yeah. a common theme. And the other one is I'm not gay, but so I kept getting guys and girls going, I'm not gay, but I let my friend suck me off. 
oh, I'm not gay, but we had a lot of drinks. And then we came back to mine and let him beat me off. And then, so then I started, I'm not gay, but. And then all these guys started sending me with their messages. And I think it's because they're desperate to tell someone. Yeah. And yeah. this is a safe place because no judgment. Yes, I think they'd be going to you. <gasps> no judgment and saying, okay, this is what happened. Please give me some feedback. You know, am I, you know, you know, they might be feeling guilty about it. Yeah. And, and am I normal? And you'd be able to say, well, have a look at this list I get through. You know? it's, it's true. It's actually become quite therapeutic to share people's secrets because you never want someone to be kink shamed. Everyone's got their kinks. It makes us human. And if I'm sharing them, people feel less alone. Yeah, so, so true. Jenna, have you thought about doing a television show, a radio show on Saucy Secrets? I really I'm want just to. picturing <laughs> at the moment the show. I think it'd I think it'd go brilliantly well. I, I really want to do it and I want to take a deep dive into these topics. So like what is pegging? How do you do it? Why what's the interest? Why uh, like, you know, the the spectrum of bisexuals, like why do guys feel shame for kind of experimenting? Why do women feel like they have to be naughty and get this little room? Like we've all got kinks, we've all got stuff. I would love to explore lots of the current themes that are coming mm. up, make it a safe space. Not even sexually, people you know, everyone has their thing. Yeah. Once a, a, a friend of ours. Uh, a, a girlfriend of ours was having a difficult time with an old boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, he's just driving me mad. He won't leave me alone. I said, give me a phone. So I rang him and he was like, I said, mate, you've got to leave this girl alone, leave her alone. And he was like, why? What are you going to do about it? And I said, look, i am be honest with you. I know what you've been up to. And if you don't leave her alone, I'm going to tell everyone about it. And he left her alone. And she said, what do you mean? Like, what was he up to? And I said, I have no idea. But, but he it, did. Everyone's up to some, <laughs> <Yeah>. something. <laughs> I had to stop sharing the cheating ones because they were getting so depressing. And all my friends kept coming to me and going, is everyone cheating? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's so true. You ask any kind of, we call them fuck boys. Right. You ask any is that F-Boy Island? F-Boy Island. 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 God, I love that yeah. show. It's so good. It's so good. And the, and you just go to a guy, I know what you've done. They're like, oh, fuck. I have no idea. Everyone's hiding something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you wrote once that you went to the horniest city in the world. Yeah, New York. So is New York the horniest oh my city God, in the so world? Oh, so horny. So horny. I loved it. I was in heaven. I got back about a month ago and um, I landed and I was going through security I was looking feral and I had this driver picking me up and he was getting really cranky in my inbox. He's like, I'm about to leave, but it's just because immigrate, like the line is so long. Mm. And the guy at the immigration who has to stamp your passport was like, where are you staying? I was like, meatpacking district. He's like, that's right near me. You should take me for dinner. And I was like, we're on here. <laughs> <laughs> New York is shameless. They treat it like a numbers game. They're like... It's like every guy goes, I'm going to go out today and ask 10 girls out, and one of them is going to say yes. It's just the nature of the city. People have to be forward to make it. it it's so true because mm. here with my career, I was getting a bit, am I hustling too much? Am I being annoying? Am I, you know, when I ask for specific things, am I being too pushy? And my best friend turned around to me and said the, same, the best thing because I was writing for the New York Post and I was doing it to them and whatever I said, they're like, we appreciate it. Yep. Here's your headline. Here's this, here's that. And she said, Jana, in America, this wouldn't be annoying. It's called the hustle. It's the hustle, yes. And I love it. Yeah. It's like they mm. respect you for pushing. And I think it's like that in the dating game. Okay. A question then with America. There's one side is the hustle. Mm. Then there's the other side is like I find dealing at times – with Americans as far as business concerned is tricky yeah. because, wow, that is amazing. Yeah. What, Maddie, that is incredible. Maddie, I can't wait. You are, yep, we're going to, they kill you with kindness, but mm -hmm. it's so disingenuous a lot of the time. Oh, completely. So how does that work in a relationship? The best. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I went over there for work as well and I came back going, I'm going to kill it. Like, they love me. I'm packing up my bags and going, and then you get back and you're like, you think about it, you're like, oh, they were blowing smoke up my ass. But in terms of dating, 
tell me I'm pretty. I want to hear it. Tell me I'm the best thing in the world because we're not getting that in Australia. In Australia. Well, you once, you and Carl Stefanovi had a bit of a set (laughs) to once. You said Australian men are duds. Yes. They really are because it is. I've never had so many Uber Eats orders in my life because it's like come over. We'll get some Uber Eats and we'll watch something. Mm, lack of effort. Netflix. Lack of oh, effort. Lots of lack Netflix. of effort. Netflix. Yeah. Netflix and chill. Yeah. And I said, and this is where Carl and I butt heads, I said, take us, like we live in Australia. Take us to a pretty bar overlooking the beach. Take us to an art gallery. Take us on the Bondi to Bronte walk. And he was like, that sounds horrible. Yeah, I Too far. To, yeah. So to Trish. <laughs> Come down to Colorado Beach Services Club. It's a bit, a bit on Globe Derby races. Well, there's no tolls Derby, in New, there's anyway. no tolls in New York. I think that's the issue. Like you don't want to have to drive all the way over to Bondi. And martinis are cheap. Yeah, exactly. Um, Okay, we're going to finish with a little menu of questions okay. to get to know you a Insights, bit Insights, if you will. Insights. We always finish with it. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Notebook. I know, it's so I'm, cliche. But I've never seen The movie. Notebook. <gasps> oh. Have you not? No. Nah. Ryan Gosling yeah. and... Uh, Rachel McAdams. Yeah, Rachel McAdams. Very good. It I like Rachel McAdams. hit you in the heart. Brilliant. Maddie Johns, I know you well. And you will cry. Oh, you are a crier. You will cry. Post 50, honestly, I am teeming with estrogen. Oh, well, yeah. then you. Uh, okay, maybe yeah. don't watch this at certain uh, times. I can't watch it. Like, honestly, if anyone hurts a child in a movie or hurts an animal, oh, even me worse, too. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I should. Or a song. Yeah, the relationship sadness, though, I don't know if that'll actually hit you in the heartstring. Oh, relationship. Yeah. Oh, no, it's about, this will. It's sadness in relation. I don't. He's pretty heartless when the it comes old to people, relationships. You'll put your. I think. I think you'll put yourself in the older man, and oh. Trish will be, like yeah. it's the. Uh, I don't want to give too much yeah, away. Yeah, we won't. But okay. I see it for you and Trish. Okay, gotcha. And it will catch you in the face. She'll appreciate that. She's yeah. always trying you to coach should, me to go to movies. That's your new what you're doing. I took her to the Iron Claw, the wrestling one with the Van Erics. She was like, "This is not romantic." <laughs> well, that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Favorite song? Oh, anything by Adele. Although I'm really loving, um, I'm getting into country at the oh, moment. Oh, it's it's in at the moment. What about country? So good. It's as big as it's been, like probably since the mid seventies when you had crossover artists. I was talking to Cooper and and Kenner about this the other day. Crossover artists in the seventies. You had people like Bob Seger, mm-hmm. who ventured from. They they venture between rock and country of sorts, and now we're seeing that again. Yeah, yeah. Liv and Beyonce has just released a country album. It's has a she banger. Really? It's yeah. a banger. This ain't Texas. Yeah, she did. It's really yeah, good. yeah. It's been playing on the radio, or it's stuck in my brain. Me too. It's yeah. real catchy. But there's a guy. He just came out to Australia. Oh, what's his name? Who was it? Hang on, I have to look yeah, it up. Look it up. I topic. spent Christmas. With Chris Stapleton. My... No, but well, I would. In every angle. Oh, God. oh my God. He's... Jenna, I'm blushing. <laughs> no, um, Zach Bryan. Zach Bryan. He's oh one of the God. biggest, yeah. I remember everything is the most romantic. Do you know why I like country? Because the men are so romantic. Yeah. But it doesn't come off as romantic. They're probably dirt. They're alpha. probably dirt bags. Who was the bloke? Like, who, totally who's my do. man? I, I, I've only listened to a couple of his songs. But you and Kenner loved him, and he's the guy who's always getting arrested everywhere. Oh, Morgan Wallen. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, cool. I just yeah. like, I, I just like the fact that I'd like. I know he's a country star, but I love the fact that rock stars should behave like rock stars. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And he'll just go down to the local pub and get like maggot in Nashville. <laughs> oh yeah, my yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> See you down there, bro. Okay. Who's the most? Okay, of all the famous people in the world, you can mm-hmm. pick one. If you had to. Describe them from a dating point of view. Who would be absolutely perfect in your eyes? Who would it be? It would be Adele because I told this on the girl team once, my lesbian dream with Adele. (laughs) Right. right. I had a dream because I love her so much. I just think she is heart of the earth. She's got the dirtiest Cockney accent. Yeah. And I love her for it. And Mm. she swears like a trooper. And I was going to her concert and I dreamt that I lost my tickets and I stumbled upon her and she said, if we can be lovers, I will let you sit backstage. And I was like, you're on Adele. <laughs> you're on I saw her live when I was 17. 
Did you? Yeah. I mean, she's she when swears she was like, like you wouldn't believe. Curvilicious. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. She was, uh, we got really blind. Like we, we got. Well, really with drunk. Adele. No, no, not with her. You're no, living my fantasy. We got really drunk and went there, me and my mates. And um, there's four of us. We all bought Adele t-shirts because we were real drunk. And <laughs> we started, uh, we got like blind. We're yelling out. Yeah, singing all those songs as you would at an Adele concert. Because she's got so many bangers. She does. And. This old bloke turned around and told my mate to shut up. And then my mate got up and said he was going to headbutt his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to headbutt his teeth Tell. in. And security guards just went, boss. <laughs> and we got thrown out of the Adele concert. Oh, my God. You guys God. are badass. How do you get thrown out of Adele? Imagine that. Of all of all concerts, Adele, like, you, it just no. seems like such a nice crowd. I got thrown then. out of Guns N' Roses for dancing to enthusiastically. So <laughs> I was... I was um, Endangering, endangering other patrons and they're being intimidated. And I said, brother, I'm at a fucking Guns N' Roses right? concert. He said, that's the first warning. Anyway, I was dancing again, not dancing outrageously. In fact, not a lot of people around me came up and said, mate, I want you to settle down when you're dancing. And I said, oh, please, please throw me out. Come on, I dare you. And he did. Well <laughs> done. That does not surprise me. I've seen you dancing at the... Um, Melbourne Cup marquee. Oh, <laughs> that's remember right. Remember that? Sorta. It was you, me, Dermot, Bill Shorten, and Bill Shorten's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I remember that? <laughs> it was the best. And then we had Bill Shorten in three months later, and he walked in. He goes, Jenna, I've got the best picture of us, and it was the five of us, My. drunk as skunks, in the Moom marquee, <laughs> and you were dancing up a storm. Do you know what? It's interesting with radio, seeing all different people come in, different walks of life, but you know, particularly politicians, and you've got a certain idea of them. Sometimes you've got a great idea. Think, I'd vote for that person. They come in, you say, I will never vote for that person. Yeah. Then you get other people to come in that you don't think have got a lot of charisma. Like Bill Shorten's a guy I look at and never thought had much charisma about him. But when he came into the studio and he actually let down the guard, I said to him, I said, you know what, Bill? I said, you are a real like you, you're a really charismatic good bloke and he said i'm sensing a butt coming and i said there is i said but why do you listen to your handlers and advisors mm -hmm. to the extent that every single time they put a microphone in front of you you just go to wood yeah he was naturally so a true. really charismatic fella such a legend loves yeah. the drink loves the party yeah really cool guy but same Probably wouldn't have voted for him. Seen some other politicians come in. Ooh. Not so nice. Oh my God, there was one. I don't know if I can tell this story. You were there. <laughs> tell it. We can. Okay, I'll tell it and yeah. you can edit it if you need to. Mm. And so he was really strict and he was like, we need the questions before we even turn up. His security came. They checked out the studio beforehand. It was the wildest thing I've ever seen. So I had to go down to the parking lot and get him with security. And I brought him up to the girl team. He didn't look me in the eye once. Wouldn't shake my hand. Wouldn't look me in the eye. And then came into the studio, came to life, shook your hand, shook mm. all the boys' hands, shook Max's hand, Will, who was like basically our intern, <laughs> shook his hand, spoke to you all, mm. and then came back out and I had to take him back down to the um to the Loading car dock. park. Mm. Still wouldn't look me in the eye, wouldn't shake my hand, wouldn't like I had prepped him through his questions, I had prepped him for this segment. Nothing. And I just went, You're a bad dude. Like he just purely hated women. It was it was really interesting because he turned on me in the studio simply because I asked the question, which I think is a really relevant question to ask to ask a politician. You ask them, "What did you want to be when you're growing up?" And if their reply is a politician, it's the wrong answer mm. because it means that basically the whole life has been about gaining popularity to being elected. That's what the whole modus operandi is. Where if you ask the the correct thing, "What did you want to be growing up?" You know, the perfect answer would be, well, you know, I wanted to be, let's say, for instance, mate, I wanted to be a, uh, you know, an engineer. And I went, I'd, I'd become an engineer and I started my own company and yeah. then I've gone into that. Whenever a person starts their life or goes to school going, I want to be a politician, I just go, mm, professional Fork. politician. Yeah. 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 So true. Jack, we can beat that name, can't we? Yeah, we'll just beep that. Let's leave the story in because it's brilliant. <laughs> the story is a beauty. Yeah. Fuck oh, you. Oh, he made me so angry. But I do have, just quickly with the song, I have your favourite song because it gave J.A. He did go into cardiac arrest. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you'll guess this story. You came in and you're like, it was Harry Styles' 
first ever single and you're like, guys, this is a banger. And to be fair, it was a banger. Yep. Um, uh, what was so, it as called? Sign of the as Times. Sign, sign of, of the, the times. times. It was such a good you song. You loved it. You thought it sounded like Oasis. Yeah, I did. and it did. And I played it. I said, I said to our <laughs> listeners, I said, I'm not going to tell you who this is, but I'm going to play it and I want you to ring up and tell you. Think. And guys ring up tradies going, that is the best song. Phones uh, went off the hook. And then later I said, okay, you want to know who sings it? It's Harry Styles from One Direction. People are like, no way. And anyway, <laughs> J.A., the boss came in, Jamie Angel. No, mate. <laughs> Why are we playing Harry Styles on Triple M? <laughs> we used to love giving him cardiac arrest. We did. It happened a lot. It happened a lot. All right. Back to the menu. Yes. Sorry. Best cool. and worst holiday. Oh, uh, best holiday uh, was, oh, okay. I just thought of the worst. Best holiday, New York. Always, always. It is just a city that's alive. It's pumping. The men are heaven. Um, there's always something to see or do. It's just, uh, there's no, someone said the other day, New York is so special because it's, n you can't pick a culture. They're all there. Yeah. Or it's it's a creative town. It's fascinating. So, mm. um, New York's the best. Uh, the worst holiday was last year. Oh my god! I went to this poor guy. Who's if he listens to this, he'll be like, "That was me." Um, <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Um, I went to the Barossa Valley with a guy who was in the midst of a divorce. Oh. Don't do that. Hang on here. Imagine having dinner. Hang on, it's my ex-wife again. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> no. Literally, you're triggering me because it was giving those vibes. And she had taken the kids away for an overseas holiday, which I heard about 20 times. Oh. And we went to the wineries, which I was so excited for. I love a winery. And he popped a Valium before we went to the winery. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. And then we went to the winery and then that brought on the tears. So then he was crying and then trying to dissect his whole relationship and asking me where he went wrong. And I was oh. like, I just wanted a romantic weekend. So then I said to myself, just get really drunk. <laughs> so yeah. I just got really drunk. And I had a great time. But I did ask him to take me straight to the airport. Okay. Upon that was a pretty bad holiday. Right. What about your best and worst accent? Yeah, your favourite accent, Jenna. Cockney. Best Cockney. Um, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Oh mm. yeah, right. Accent. Yeah. Yep. Peaky Blinders. English Cockney accent. That sort of tough East Ender oh, sound. So hot. That is what's, my favorite. And what's the okay. one that okay. you just we get, hate? <laughs> every, <laughs> every time we ask this, there is always one. <laughs> this always accent. the same one. We always got to apologize. Really? Yes. Oh, what's, yeah, what, this is going to be bad. I want to see if it's the, the same. The worst accent. <laughs> I don't want to be racist. <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's not racist. Okay, it's not racist. It's um, the worst accent would be, oh, I know what I want to say. <laughs> Listen, like the in Indian accent isn't sexy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, that's the first what? time someone hasn't said sex. Yeah. It's the first South time someone hasn't said sex. No, Santa. I like South Africa. Oh, dear. Well, I dated um, the captain for the Springboks. You did? For a hot second, yeah. And did he was you? like, good. I can't do it. It would be racist. Get down. No, <laughs> oh, Jenna, that's... just hang on before I have my pino. I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm going to have a Valium. <laughs> and it's too. Just hold he on a minute. Yeah. Hello, Jenna. Hello, Harry. You... Hello, Jenna. Are you having a wonderful evening? It's so sexy. Yeah. I think it's so That's sexy. Aggressive. Are you having the lamb shoulder or the sirloin steak? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they saying I love that accent? What you said, so Jenna, alpha. will never be forgotten. Thank you very much. Now let's have some pavlova. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I you're think, ruining it. Yeah, you're, you're bringing it <laughs> yeah. more and more unstuck. All right, what about the most impressive person you've ever met? Oh my gosh. Um, 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 most uh, Angela White. Really? Yeah. Well, I was so pleasantly shocked by her. She's savvy. She's a businesswoman. I said to her, "Will you? What will you do once you age out of your career?" And she said, "I never will, thanks to American Pie." Stifler's yeah. mum just made turned, yeah. older women sexy. Did, but, did you enjoy White Lotus, by the way? Loved and why I love. She's my favorite character in the whole world. I went to watch Jennifer Coolidge. Um, she came to Sydney with the creator. Oh, right. Yes. And I went to the ICC to watch her give a speech. She is. White Lotus in real life. 
Right. Like he he even said the creator said I wrote the character based on Jennifer. And she's just cool. She gives actually should be my second option because yeah. she gives zero fucks. She is who she is, and she's really enjoying life. Third series coming out, shot in Koh Samui. Is yeah. it? Yeah, it's the it, we stayed at the hotel. Me and Trish stayed at the same hotel a couple of years ago. Was it nice? It was nice. There was a bit of a thing once. Okay. So anniversary, bottle of uh, bubbly. We've gone up there anyway. We we. Me and Trisha coming coming back. We've been at the pool. We've got to we'll go up to the room and have a glass. So I said to, to I said to the to the guy that um, the young Thai guy. I said, "Oh, hey, look, could, could I um could I get uh, some ice to my room?" And he went. He looked at his mate really <laughs> like so and went, "Oh, maybe, yeah." And just went, "Oh, yeah." And his friend went, "Sorry, what do you want?" I said, "Oh, ice." And he went. He pointed to his nose. And went. <laughs> I said, "No, no, guys." Frozen water, <laughs> not, not not ice, breath. not today, <laughs> yeah. not before midday, guys. <laughs> oh my god! But also checks out. <laughs> yeah, that it does. sounds spot on. And finally, the biggest dead shit you've ever met. Oh, well, who we just said? Yeah, we just said. <laughs> oh, really? That politician, yeah, the politician who shall remain nameless. Yeah. Yes, who was deeply chauvinist. Oh, okay. Jenna? Mm. Okay, we've got Julian mm-hmm. and Gabrielle. Yep. Gabrielle's good luck, bad luck. Touch one. Oh, please. Excellent. Oh. He's had um, a bit of a fall too. Yeah. You can see with people, I That's bought him. That's not a good omen. It's, when yeah, I got here, not. it broke. He fell and he uh, snapped his tail off. Oh, I think it's a boy. I'm not really sure. Not but, his tail. Uh, I got him half price too. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> yeah, you get well, what you paid about- for. About the standard I'm dating, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so give me what you got. Well done, Jana. It's been great to work with you again. So fun. Awesome. So we'll fun. Love it, thank mate. you so much. I've been looking forward to this all week. You're a champ. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you to uh, Jana Hawking for coming on then. Yeah. What did you think, Big Game? Because you haven't seen her in a long time, your old colleague. Been a few years since I was doing Jenna. She's a champ. Really good. Like she, you know, it, I imagine um, like when she first went into the grill team, you got four guys, and she'd have been thinking to herself. Like, well, she admitted to me once when she first started work. She was thinking, "Oh my god, where do I fit, where do I fit in here?" But she just fit in so well. Really, just um, we all loved her, uh, and just so well humoured. Doesn't take herself too serious, and mate, and she's done very good with the career. I, I, I'm so pleased for her, the career she's built on being a relationship expert. Yeah, it's good stuff, and mate, good writer too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of good, a, a lot, a bit different for you there. Like, there's some topics that uh, you were learning about too, getting interested in. I mean, you told me a lot about pegging, but like, to be honest, I, I had no idea what it was. But now I'm, I'm enlightened. Yeah, mm-hmm. very good stuff. It was very interesting. I hope that maybe that spices you and Patricia's relationship. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't hold your breath. <laughs> don't hold your breath. But no, it was really good. Good to see Jenna, and uh, I, I tell you what. I, I reckon I, I reckon she we should get her on board with her own podcast here. Mm, I, I think, think she, she would be uh, she very did. very good relationship stuff with podcasts. Yeah, I think she's got a big career coming. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Just look at me go! Listen to Bill Gates go. <laughs> You're anointing the next generation. <laughs> yeah, right, Thank you. Coops. Good on you, man. See you, Matthew. I'm glad you sat in it with that that was uh that was good it was a little weird sitting in the same room as my two sons as uh we'll what do talk, you mean we're talking you, about hang on a second we're talking about pegging and that sort of stuff it was a little strange you're glad i, I was s- i was blushing you're glad i sat in on that this is my podcast too what the fuck are you talking okay, about? okay no worries okay i suppose it's cooper and maddie johnson yes fair you. enough <laughs>